use a paper. It's just okay. Good morning, everyone. Let us have a word of prayer. Let us bow our heads. Our kind Heavenly Father, we thank you again for such a time as this as we come to study the book of John. Um, Lord, we ask for the presence of your Holy Spirit to be with each and every one of us as we collectively come to share our thoughts, uh, to share our experiences, and to um, talk more about our blessed Savior, Jesus Christ, who in this book, John is depicting the story of Christ in his early ministry. So be with us now, I pray. Be with all of those that participate. Let their hearts reign free to speak freely of the love and the joy of Christ that has uh, kept them, kept all of us alive this week. These things I pray in the loving name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. You know, it's interesting I said the, the term um, alive this week. Every week we have heard um, another person passing away from um, sickness, from illness, um, from, from COVID or from many other um, debilitating diseases that have, uh, have taken them. And um, I don't think I've ever in my lifetime have seen such a thing where it's just a lot of people you know or grew up with or worked with. And in our workplace, my workplace, one guy commented to me, he said, Mr. Hall, I've never seen nothing like this. It's family and friends every week. We usually have collection for someone that has passed and um, they had three or four cards uh, to, to the bereavement to send to the families. And, um, you know, one of my coworkers that uh, when I first came to work for the city, he, he had passed away this week and um, every week something in, and it's just letting us know that soon and very soon our Lord is gonna come and that we need to have ourselves ready for his coming. So in lesson two, we talk about the testimony of John the Baptist to Christ. So here we have, um, some of you know the terminology or whatever are used is called a forerunner. And John would be called the forerunner before Christ. Let me ask you all a question. Can you say to yourselves that you are forerunners? Yes or no? Anyone? Anybody understand what I, the terminology and what I use, what it means to be a forerunner? Are we forerunners before Christ here in 2021? Yes or no? That's what we're called to be. Okay, so there you made it, you've made the statement. We're called to be, but we have to say that we are forerunners. We're called to be the forerunners, but we are we the forerunners before Christ? What 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 would be the what would be the responsibility of being the forerunner? Is there a responsibility placed on us to be forerunners? Yeah, to prepare the people for God's reach, for Jesus' return. Okay, so return prepare the people for God's return. And also dealing with each one of us one-to-one um, -one with God, uh, preparing for his return. So first it would have to deal inward with each one of ourselves and then outward spreading it to others to let them know of Christ's return. Now in these questions, um, let's look at, let's just get a reader. And let's just read the whole of the reading today. Um, chapter one, verses 19 through 34. So let's just, let's just read the text from the scripture, the whole thing. And then in our minds, we can um, get into seeing what exactly transpired here in John 1. So anyone, that, is there anyone that would like to read, start reading out in John 1, 19? 
And this, and this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou the prophet? He answered, no. Then said they unto him, who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. Why sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, and said the prophet Isaiah, and they which were sent were of the Pharisees, and they asked him and said unto him, why baptize thou, why baptize thou then, if thou be not that Christ, or Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water. But there standeth one among you, whom you know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes, whose shoes latch it I'm not worthy to unloosen. These things were done in Beth, Betharba beyond Jordan, where John was baptized. The next, dot, the next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is of he whom I said, After me cometh man which is preferred before me, for he was before me, and I, and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptize, pap, baptizing with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descend from, he from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending, and remaining on, remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bare record that this is the Son of God. Amen. Read that very beautifully. But let's look now at that first question. We read through the whole context of what we're uh, going to talk about today. We look here at the forerunner, John the Baptist, that was um, sent before Christ bearing warning. Now, let's look at the first question. It says, what question was asked of John. What question was asked of John? What, what did they ask him? What question did they ask him? They asked him who he was. Okay, but they, did, they, did they know who this person was or it was a popularity of the people hearing about this, this man in the desert uh, baptizing uh, people? And um, this was, was this something strange to the people of that time? Something different? Um, from the context of what was read, I believe it was something different, but they asked him who he was in verse 19. Mm -hmm. And then in verse 21, they were asking more questions. You know, are you Elijah? Are you that prophet? So it's kind of clear that they really didn't know who he really was. But they were amazed at how so many people were following him. He had uh, many disciples. He had many followers out there. And so let, let's, look at the, let's look at the second question. Who asked it and who sent the questionnaires? So from some populous place these men were sent because he was way out in the desert in the wilderness out there in Jordan River in that area uh, near Bethany now they're asking these people who are being sent who 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 asked this question what were they what what type of, of men were they verse 19 says the Jews sent the priests and the Levites to ask him that question right 
So these are men of high position in the church. Are these church men, church brethren? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Because when we talk about Levites, what were the Levites uh, considered in the time of uh, the Church of Israel's departure from Egypt? There were twelve. There were twelve tribes, but the Levites. What was their responsibilities? What did they do? What did they represent? Their responsibility was the sanctuary and the the priestly service. You know, anything to do with um, God was their responsibility. Right. So they were they were highly looked upon or highly regarded in the uh, structure of of the church of of Israel at that time. So now. Now, what is the questionnaires? They were sent. They were sent from the, the city of Jerusalem. So now, what was the reply that John uh, made back to these questionnaires? It says number three. What reply did John make back? He replied, I am not the Christ. Oh, wait a minute. Very interesting you answered that and said it in such form. I am not the Christ. So were the people looking, were they looking for Christ? Thinking that, that, that he has come and out here in the desert and didn't come amongst them in the, in the city? Um, is, is that, uh, that's an interesting uh, you know, that help me out, people. Were they were these people looking for Christ, and were they um, were they following their their scrolls or their history? Uh, who who are, who are you with such power to come amongst us? Did they really uh, were are they really looking for Christ? Well, they were I'm, waiting for Christ, but uh, they were waiting. Again? I said they were waiting for Christ. They wanted to be rescued from their uh, current situation. So they were waiting, but searching that I, they are not really searching because if they are searching, they would have understand or listened to the, to the, to John the Baptist and they would understand what he's saying. I want to piggyback off of what uh, my sister just said. Yes. Um, they had their own selfish reasons. Ah. But as we know, their reasons for wanting Christ were different from the reasons why Christ came to the this earth in the first place. You know, they ah. wanted to um, kick the Romans out of Jerusalem and they wanted to be rid of, of Roman rule. And so um, I'm going to say, you know, when, when you look at the people that were actually looking for Christ, you have the wise men in the East, you have the shepherds, you know, you had some other people of God, but it, it what I would say it, it was not the vast majority of individuals that were really looking for him and actually desiring him to come. So, so, so the the majority just wanted to get away under Roman bondage. Yes, is that that's all? I, I I just want to get away from Roman bondage. So, would it be then that? Let me ask this: Would it be that you would want to get away from Roman bondage and do your own thing, where you don't have to talk to anyone or no one over you? I just want to do my own uh, situation. If they didn't have Roman bondage, would they be better off as, as people following God? Um, probably not. And the reason why I say that um, in my personal worship, I completed uh, the book of Judges. Mm. And in the book of Judges, it talks about how the, the nation of Israel, you know, they started off with God in the days of Joshua and then 
you know, after the days of, of Joshua and his elders, after that time, then they went into idolatry. And then God would raise up a judge because they went into idolatry and they would pay tribute to whoever. And then the judge would deliver them from the power of whoever. And it was just a, a never ending cycle of that. Yes. So it, it was a cycle of not just, uh, it was a cycle of backsliding. And then some, somebody would come and then they would get it together for a little while. And then they would backslide again and again and again and again. But when we talk about uh, wanting Christ, there's a lot that's entailed with that. It's not just, well, you know, I want Jesus to come and, and, and that's it. No, there's a lot that is entailed with that. You know, our hearts have to be ready for him. And I believe that there were a lot of people who wanted Jesus to come, but there were also a lot of people who really did not uh, desire his presence. You know, it's interesting. Let's look at question number four. It says, with what specific questions did they urge their inquiry? And what reply did John make in each case? Somebody, let's look at that where they, 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 they questioned, are you this? Are you that? Are you this? Are you that? They, they were seeking, trying to find out who was this man. Uh, of course, they believe sent from God because of the power of what he was doing. Um, so what questions, um, what questions did these people, these uh, messengers, what questions did they specifically ask of him? They asked him. If he was Elijah, they asked, are you Elijah or are you that prophet? And he and answered was, no, or Elias. And answered, yeah, and he answered no, right? He answered no to, to, those, to those questions. Um, then read on to 22. What did it, what did it say there? Twenty two says, Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? Why sayest thou of thyself? Okay, now stop there for I want you to just turn to yourself, all of us, and look at that thing of, of a question. If somebody came to you and you're proclaiming something, you're proclaiming the God of heaven, and they ask you, What are you? us here now what 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 can we say what 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 would we say to that person if they ask what are you what are thou sayest what would you tell them in other words i'm asking for a definition of self what as ourselves what are we saying what are we what would we tell people that would question We're Christians. We're Christians that believe in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And we're looking for his, uh, the second coming of our Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very well said. So we are Christians. We follow Christ. And we're also looking for the second coming of our Lord. These people here were looking for the great Messiah to come and take them out of bondage to take them away from Roman rule, but not particularly to take themselves from sin. Ah, let's look at question five. In order to have some answer to carry back to Jerusalem, what did they further ask? And our dear sister read that in, in 22, they said, what art thou? What may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou? Of, of, of ourselves and of yourself. And then in question six, it said, what did John then declare himself to be? I asked the question to you, what we declare ourselves to be. We say we're Christians following Christ, waiting for our second coming. Let's look, what did, what did John say that, that he was? 
I'll go ahead and read that in verse number 23. It says, he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. Okay. Sorry, my thing. I want to call it. Yeah. Say again. He said, make straight what? Make straight the way of the Lord. Okay, so he's talking about the Lord. Now, when he when he mentioned that to the people, did, did you think, did they understand what he said right there at that time, make way for the Lord? Did, did they comprehend what he was saying? I think in a way um, they probably did because he's talking about, he later on talks about how there's one that is coming after him whose shoe latchet he's unable to tie. He's talking about Christ. Mm -hmm. And so um, when the one thing um, I think of is if he's preaching about the Savior to come and he knows the time in which uh, the Savior is about to come, then he had to have studied his Bible. He had to have known. And of course, we know that uh, the angel told uh, his parents what he would be. So he knew that he was the forerunner of Christ. Right. He knew that, but he was trying to tell the people that who that's what he is. But the people that came to inquire, they're thinking that the Christ had come and that this is him in, in, in the wilderness or that, you know, they, they come to, 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 assure themselves of, of who is this person with such following. I, 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 you know, as we talk about the people of uh, back then, they were very um, uh, envious or jealous of anyone that had any other fame or power besides themselves. They, they did not, the, the, the Levites or the Pharisees, and the, they didn't like anyone else that, that had a following, you know. Um, is, th is that the same truth today with people because what are we having an issues with today many people today are following all types of people all false teachers all false followings these are the things that that many people um are is happening today in many ways in religious ways and in political ways look what happened this week with people following a man and what they did in the capital of this country. Very interesting, brothers and sisters. This is where you can find that something can be said about a person or people or a group, and very quickly, people will turn upon them or 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 want to fight or do whatever or to eliminate um, such such people. So this is where I, I can see very clearly um, sect or groups of people being attacked. Uh, by just someone raising the lectern or raising their voice or, or crying out and saying, this, these are wrong people, they need to, to be done away with. If, there, if, did you, if you didn't see anything, if you had witnessed it this week, you could see how mob rule or people's minds or whatever are taking over. And this is those that are not in Christ that are following Christ or study or know about his soon return. So with John, John was um, clearly telling them that he was uh, a voice in the wilderness. He was clearly saying for them to make straight the way of the Lord as said by the prophet Isaiah. So what he's saying is prophecy is being fulfilled. Now, when we say we're Christians and we're going out, we also would teach and show the Bible and we'd also show that prophecy is being fulfilled and coming um, to fruition. Now, let's look at um, number seven. It said, to what sect did the questionnaires belong to? So these, the, remember, we talk about sect or different people or different groups. So what group were, were these people from in Jerusalem? And they which were sent were the Pharisees. They were the Pharisees. If we go to the the end with Christ and his crucifixion and, 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 the, and the end time of his 
his life here on this earth, he was being what? Persecuted in the halls of the Sadducees and the Pharisees. But the Pharisees here were the ones that were sending out the questionnaires. And this is who they belong to. Let me ask you this. Do you think that there is, um, I want to just interject thought in your mind that there are pharisaical groups of people today that think very highly of themselves and that, that they are no other, that they are the chosen one or that they are, um, we're automatic, we're in heaven. Um, <laughs> There's no none better better than us. We know the word. We know this. Is there such a, a a sect of people today that have that pharisaical view uh, back then and still carry that view today? I think so. Um, a lot of people. There are some people who think they are saved by what they know. Mm -hmm. And when you study the simplicity of salvation, it's not about just okay. I study my Bible and that's it. You know, it's about surrender. We have to surrender our hearts. But the same respect, if you look at the spirit of, of, of the way uh, Christ worked, he worked in such a manner that he was not willing to let anybody perish. So right. it wasn't about, oh, it's all about me. It wasn't about pride with him. It was about trying to save as many people as he could. You yes. know, the centurion. Um, he helped the centurion. He helped the woman at the well. He helped Mary Magdalene. He helped the tax collector. So he was really a, a man of, of the people. You know, mm -hmm. he cared about the people and he wanted to draw as many people as possible. So anytime we have an air of pride, well, I believe this and you don't believe that, you know, we have to check ourselves because it's not just about knowledge. You know, if you look at Lucifer, Lucifer had a, a lot of knowledge. Yes. You know, he was in the very presence of God, but we see what happened to him. So it's not just about the head knowledge. It's about um, allowing those things to transform our lives and to also share those things as we um, learn them ourselves so that we can draw as many people as possible to Christ. Okay, very good. Let's move on to where the que other question said, that the sect that said, why did they question his right to do? And what did John say, what, what, with what did John say he baptized? So now the first question to ask was, well, who are you? Then the second thing is, wait a minute, you out here doing the work, but why are you doing, why are you doing this work? Okay. First they say, who are you? Then they say, why are you doing this work? All right. So where's where 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 did they ask in, in 25? And they and let me read it. It says, and they asked him and said unto him, why? baptizest thou then if thou be not that Christ nor Elias nor the prophet. So in other words, are they questioning his authority to baptize? Did you all catch that? They're, they're questioning his authority. He's baptizing people and now they're asking, now who gave you authority to baptize? Anyone, were they questioning his authority? Yes. Go ahead, speak, yes. Yes, because you know, they, if you are baptizing, you know, like remember it's a, uh, you know, they, you can in their mind that the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you have to be, a member, you have to be educated in the pro in 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 their in their sect, so that you can do services for God. You have to be like a member. Well, John is not a member. Is 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 that the, is this is twenty twenty one? Is there a problem with that same thing today? Yeah. 
So wait a minute, who is the one that, that requests or ask or tell, tell us to go ahead baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Ghost? Jesus. Who, so he sent us to, <laughs> wait a minute. So Jesus sent us out to do his will. Correct. But yeah. now these guys here, they're coming out there. This man is way, he's in Bethany, way out from Jerusalem, baptizing them. And now they're questioning, who are you to baptize? What authority do you have to do this? Yeah. Brothers and sisters, the comparison and the parallel is very clear from then until now. It's the same thing that is being carried on question is asked, who are you and what are you doing? And we're to follow Christ. As we said, we are Christians. We're following what Christ did. This is what Christ did. Let's move on. It says, whom did he say stood among them? Was his work earlier or later than that of John? What's the answer to that one? Was the work was the work earlier or later than that of John? Who was John the Baptist talking about? Was he talking about himself as being the baptizer or was he baptizing for a reason? John said that he was <clears throat> baptizing with water, but there was one still, but was, there still at one among you whom ye know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latchet I'm not worthy to unloose. Okay, so he clearly was telling them about the about Jesus Christ who was coming. Yes. Very, very clear. And he's like, listen, I'm I'm I am come before to do this work to prepare for he who is coming. But he was, John was like, I am not even worthy. Now, did you, let me, let me read something to you. Um, let's see if I find it here. And it talks about, um, there was something here in, um, in, in Ellen White's writings in the Bible. Can we read it? It talks about the, let me see if I find it. Let me read these to you. These are some powerful things uh, from um, the wonderful condescension of God. It says here, the doctrine of the incarnation of Christ in human flesh is a mystery. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations. It is the great and profound mystery of godliness. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Christ took upon himself a human nature and a nature inferior to his heavenly nature. Nothing so shows the wonderful condescension of God as this. Christ did not make believe take human nature. He did ver verily take it. He did in reality possess human nature. As children of the partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. He was the son of Mary. He was of the seed of David according to human descent. He is declared to be a man, even the man Christ Jesus. This man, writes Paul, was counted worthy, more glory than Moses, insomuch as he was builded the house that hath more honor, that hath honor than the house. Um, I'm trying to find that part, but but um, there was a thing with the with the uh, Jews about um, the latchet or um, being um, oh I had it here and I can't even see. Well, anyway, let's move on. I'll, I'll see if it'll, it'll come back to me. Um,
All right, I'm, we'll move on. I'll see. If it, it, I'll come back. Um, so what did, what was John putting? He said, "What estimate did John put on his own unworthiness?" Well, he talked about the the shoe latchet that he was not even worthy enough to uh, to deal with uh, the master his his shoes or or the the shoe latchet. And then the next thing says, where did these things happen? So where did all of this, this happen? Where were all these people at? Where were, where were they at? Um, verse 28 says, these things were done in Bethabara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. And, and Bethabara, the, the name of Bethabara is uh, translated or, or Bethany. If you look on your Bible map, you will see that it was Bethany, which is uh, a ways from uh, Jerusalem. Um, whom did John see the next day? So now this first day here that they're talking about, the, the account was when the Pharisees came and they talked to John the Baptist and was going back and forth in their account with him. Now, even in, in this same text, we go to the next day. And this is very interesting. So it was one day after the other that they came and asked these questions. And on the very next day, those questions were answered. So 13 says, whom did John see the next day? Now, let me ask a question to those of Bible scholars and Bible people here. Let me see if you can, if had, had these two, ever been close to one another at a location before? This is a, a quiz question. Had these two? No, no. I say yes. Oh, yes. hold the back, hold back, Virgin. I say yes. Oh, hold in back, the Virgin. Had they, listen to my question, had they ever been in a location together before these two? No. In the womb, they were. Yeah, ah. when, when did, um, yeah, I remember. In the, but physical, in the, no. It, I, I said, it, have these two, I didn't say, I said, have these two been at a location near each other? Oh, when they are pregnant, the mothers. That's right. That, that's all. Yeah. Other, other yeah. than that, this is the first other time that, they, they see never, each other. They have never seen each other, but... Let's somebody read that text. It's, somebody read 29. This is a powerful text. Read 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Okay, so they had never seen each other before, but they knew when they were in each other's presence in the womb. And he looked up and saw him coming, and he said, What? Behold, the Lamb of God. That's powerful, brothers and sisters. That's like you meeting someone you never knew, but the Spirit of God declares who that person is. Behold the Lamb of God. I want to share the text. It's in Luke chapter 1, beginning. Um, I'll begin with verse 38. Mm -hmm. And it says, and Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into, into a city of Judea and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leapt in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. So coming into the presence, even before birth, the, po the power of Christ just uh, touching, his, they were cousins, if I'm not mistaken, um, 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 John, John the Baptist. That is uh, very powerful. So under what figure Wait, wait, I want to go back with that with if they knew each other. I mean, they yeah, they knew each other. I mean, the mothers knew each other, but they never knew each other. We went to um, 
de desire of ages 109.2 to um, 110.1. And it says, hold on. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it says, Jesus and John the Baptist were cousins and closely related by the circumstances of their birth. Yet they had they had had no direct acquaintance with each other. The life of Jesus had been spent at Nazareth in Galilee, that of John in the wilderness of Judea, uh, Judah. Mm -hmm. Amid amid widely different surroundings, they had lived in uh, seclusion and had had no communication with each other. Mm -hmm. Providence had ordered this. No occasion was to be given for the charge that they had conspired together to support each other's claim. John was acquainted with the events that had marked the birth of Jesus. He had heard of the visits of Jerusalem in his boyhood and of what had passed in the school of the rabbis. He knew of his sinless life and believed him to be the Messiah. But of this, he had no positive assurance. The fact that Jesus had for so many years remained in obscurity, given no special evidence of his mission, gave, a, gave occasion for doubt as to whether he could be the promised one. The Baptist, however, waited in faith, believing that in God's own time, all would be made plain. It had been revealed that to him that the Messiah would seek baptism at at his hand and that a sign of his uh, divine character should then be given. Thus he would be um, enabled to present him to, to the people. And it goes wow. on. Re um, give that a reference one more time to us, please. It's Sire of H109.2 to 110.1. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. That, that, that cleared up and summed up everything there. Um, they did not want it to look that they had conspired or brought anything about. Um, there's, they could not, what could they say? They couldn't say anything. This is the first time that he's uh, laying eyes upon him and saying, behold, the Lamb of God. He, he, he knew the Spirit of God. It's, it's like, can you, can you sometimes tell and it's harder these days, but in the olden days, could you sometimes tell of when you meet another brethren that 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 this is a person of God or a person of of same faith of you? Can you can you tell that uh, when you meet someone? Sometimes you can. I mean, it's just a character of the person, and it's the the what's the word I'm looking for? It's just how they present themselves. Yeah, and, and, and also, too, um, <laughs> you're very careful of your environment and who you hang around with or who you make friends with or a part of. Um, that, that, too, is because uh, uh, I think as individuals, as Christians, we tend to um, um, try and stay in the right uh, character of ways of people. Um, sometimes yourself and the way you carry yourself has other people to make adjustments of themselves and to carry themselves accordingly. You know, how to act or say or speak um, even in your presence. Um, that is a testimony of to God himself and nothing of ourselves. Um, very good. Thank you, uh, Sister Sankey. Now let's look under... Um, I think 14, it says, under what figure did he speak of Christ and his work? So what was what was Christ, what was Christ's work now that John the Baptist had had proclaimed that this is the, the Lamb of God? So what is his work? His work is to do what? To take away the sin of the world. To take away the sin of the world. To take away the sin of the world. So his coming um, here, and and you know this is a a, a thing where people talk about, um, can I sin no more, or can I be free from sin? Um, is it something that you can do of yourself? Or is it something that you need to give up and let 
guidance take over? Which 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 uh, which one could should it which one could it be or should be? Can you as individuals get rid of sin? Yes or no? No. So you you need help and assistance in getting away from sin. Is it is it possible to uh, rid yourself from sin? By myself? No. Okay, so each one of us need help in order to rid ourselves from sin, correct? And, correct. Correct. Right. And and here, John the Baptist was letting the people know that this person that is coming to us, he is the one, the Lamb of God. He is the one that will take away sin. Um, what testimony did he bear to his superiority? What did he say? Did he say anything to bear his superiority? Verse 30, this is he of whom I said after me cometh a man which is preferred before me for he was before me. Now, that's very interesting. He's standing there amongst all these people in the river of Jordan. And he's, he's saying, wait a minute, this man is before me. If you heard him saying that, what, what would you think? That, what is he talking about? What would this? What would that statement mean that this, this man was before me? He was around before John was around. That, that, <laughs> that's right. He was he was around before all of them that were around you know, be before me, you know, and I, I don't think, um, I think, I think few people discerned what he was saying. And I think, I think when you look at the first couple of verses of John, it, you know, pretty much this entire chapter is talking about Jesus Christ, who was known as the word of God. And it says, the word was in the beginning with God. Yes. None of us can say that we were in the beginning with God. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But the word was in the beginning with God. So we know that, you know, Jesus existed before John the Baptist. You That's know, right. In, in that time, he wasn't, um, you know, he wasn't Jesus, so to speak. He didn't have the earthly form. He was the word. That's right. But, you know, later on in John, and we studied this in, in um, the previous lessons, in verse 14, it says the word was made flesh. And we know when the word was made flesh, that was Jesus um, being born. Mm -hmm. We know that Jesus's ministry started uh, at the time of his baptism. So mm -hmm. when John says he was before me, I believe he's referencing the fact that he <laughs> has has existed before everybody that was there. Yes. Yes. Now, um, it says 16, what does he now say was the purpose of his baptizing? What was the purpose of baptizing Christ. Somebody read um, 31. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. Okay. So therefore he comes to, comes baptizing with water. So when we talk, real quickly, when we talk about baptism, the example that was given here, what example was given here with baptism? How did they baptize? How was baptism done with John the Baptist? 
It was immersion. 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 So that means that they were immersed into the water, correct? Correct. Okay, so this is what we follow as Christians today, immersion. Now, there's some other people do other crazy things, a, a diversion of truth, and then there's false. What, what, what are some people doing falsely with baptism? What, 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 are, what do they do? What are they doing? What type of, of, of so-called baptism they call it? Sprinkling. Sprinkling. Sprinkling and then pouring water in the babies in head. Yes. So these, these are these are these are false ways of baptism that 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 other sect of, of groups that are not of Christ that they are doing. So if if I read this Bible and saw that that they were that Christ was baptism was immersion and I'm a Christian, I want to follow Christ. If I see say, see somebody doing something else, wait a minute, is there something wrong? Something is wrong with that? Yes or no? Would you follow or go along with that type of baptizing? Absolutely not. You would not. But let's look here at another question after that. It says, what does he declare that he had seen? Now, here's the other part of the of what was what happened in the process of Christ coming to him and being baptized and this says let me read it here in 32 it says and John bear record saying I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him now that's a powerful statement what 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 is what is that saying there Anyone? What what did they see? He saw a dove. He saw what? He saw a dove? Correct. He saw the spirit descending like a dove. Like a dove. Like a dove. Okay. So in other words, it was something that 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 was it was happening, and it 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 looked like a dove, or it looked like something coming in the air or coming upon him. Um, do we all take? Um, now we don't go and say that doves are holy spirits, right? No, John was the only one to see this the spirit like a dove. The others, some heard the voice. Mm -hmm. That John was the only one to see this the 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 form of the dove. That's right, because that's why it says John bear record. He made that statement saying, "I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him." So this was giving uh, John the full. Uh, certification of his work at that point that now was something was John the Baptist's work done right there at that time and Christ started his work and moved forward at that time is 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 that kind of what we look at that John is now you're finished in crisis to start is do we look at it like that is is that what that is I want what do you think about that? Is that what we're looking at? I think that John did the part that he was supposed to do, but I don't think he stopped there. I think he continued, of course, that Jesus ministry started also, but you know, they were never like together, together, whatever. So um, John the Baptist had it had his um, own disciple and so did Jesus. And they both continue, you know, their work until um, John um, the Baptist was killed. Right, so he never stopped doing his work of baptizing uh, the people and also giving, he was a voice in the wilderness. He was a warning uh, to the people. 
to prepare to be ready for something is coming. And he was speaking out in in those terms. That is, and that's the same thing for us today. We are to be those John the Baptist. We are the ones to be speaking out, preparing the way, because our Lord is is getting ready to come. And we're to prepare people to be ready to come. And that's what John the Baptist was trying to tell people was to you all need to come out of sin and be ready and be prepared for what is to come. Um, 18 and 19, it says, of what had this been declared to be the sign? And then who told him? And as a result of seeing this sign, what record did he bear? I'm going to read the last two, 33 and 34. It says, and I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. So very clearly, this disciple John who wrote this uh, uh in, in the Bible or his chapter or here is bearing record in God's word, showing everyone and telling everyone that he saw the spirit as ascending, descending on Jesus himself, baptized him, and then he can clearly bear record. And he said that this is the son of God, very clearly. And the thing is, it wasn't a thing of secret. It wasn't a thing done in, in, in hiding or in backdoor. This was publicly said, publicly done, and publicly seen by many, many people in that time of what happened. And let me ask you this. Were there followers of John that, that, that left and became followers of Christ? Yes or no? Anyone? Something to think about. All right. In closing, I'm going to read some of these notes here. I think it was in the note that we were looking. But let, let, let me read. Uh, no, let somebody read note one. Let's go through the note, read the notes real quick. Somebody read note one. Note one, John's work made a great stir. The general believed that it was time for the Messiah led to a spirit of inquiry concerning this man of the wilderness. The excitement became so great that even the Sanhedrin sent an official deputation to John, which asked him, who art thou? In the dialogue which follows, John makes a formal proclamation that the Messiah had come and was indeed present among them, but unknown by everyone except John himself. The literal basis of the figurative reply of John may be found in the practice of Eastern monarch who, whenever they enter upon an expedition or took a journey, especially to desert countries, sent harbingers before them to prepare all things for the passage and pioneers to open the passes, the level, to level the ways and to remove all impediments. Thank you. Um, the thing that I was talking about with the shoe latch, it is back here. Somebody read number two. This is the one I was trying to find. Uh, I've read it. Someone read number two. The rabbi said, every office which a servant will do for his master, a scholar should perform for his teacher, except loosing his sandal thong. But this exceptionally menial office, the Baptist declares he was not worthy to perform of Jesus. Wow. So this was a thing of their culture or a thing uh, in their time talking about the shoe latchet or the sandal uh, thong. Someone read number three. Sacrificial offerings of animals could not avail, but the death of Christ met every demand for all time and for the whole world. When under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, John had pointed to Jesus as the Lamb of God, a new light was shed upon the Savior's mission. Yes. The Lamb of God, and he was to take the place and to be 
um, sacrifice for our sins. Lord, help us. I will read the last one. In the throng gathered at Jordan, there were many who had been present at the baptism of Jesus. But the sign then given had been manifest to but a few among them. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Eyes that have never been turned in faith to him that is invisible, beheld not the revelation of the glory of God, nor heard the voice from heaven. So it is now. Often the presence of Christ and of the ministering angels is manifest in the assemblies of the people. And yet there are many who know it not. They discern nothing. But to some, the Savior's presence is revealed. You know, last night I was listening in on a family worship. And they were giving testimony of how God has done so many things for them in the past. That's why we have testimonies. Testifying how God will do certain things for each and every one of us if we earnestly pray and ask him and ask that his will be done, that God will grant those things for us if we love him and do his will. So brothers and sisters, I hope that we enjoyed this lesson of Christ coming, behold the Lamb of God. And there's gonna come a time where we will look up and say, lo, this is our God, we have waited for him. And I hope and pray that through each one of our mouths that we are standing there looking up and making that reference, lo, this is our God that we have waited for him. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this lesson. We thank you for the time that each one of us uh, take to share with one another. Lord, be with all of our Sabbath school uh, students as now we prepare for our midday service. Be with the speaker for the day. That our hearts be touched and do your will and nothing of ourselves. May love abound in each one of us. May the, the Spirit, Holy Spirit, come upon each one of us and be with us. This I pray in the loving name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters.